Hello everyone, David here. To continue in my series of just showing you new technology that I think is cool, um, today I have the Looking Glass Portrait. It's a new kind of light field display um, that gives you a stereoscopic image, but also gives you a sense of parallax. So as you move your head left to right, you can actually see a different perspective of the object in the display. It's very cool. Um, now, I can only really show you the parallax effect on this camera and, you know, in this video, um, but you'll have to take my word from it that because you have two different eyes looking at a different image, you also get a sense of depth and 3D. And when you combine that with the parallax, you get this impression of a very tangible image sitting inside the display. It really feels like there's an astronaut in there right now, albeit a very small one. So in this video, I want to talk about a few different methods to get your own content into the display and show them as holograms, um, and also give you a little bit of a review of the device and talk about how it works. Okay, let's go. So in a nutshell, the way this light field display works is that it sends out images with different colors and brightnesses um, and also different directions. So at any one time, each of your eyes are seeing a slightly different image captured from a different perspective. Um, and as you rotate the display or move your head left and right, you're seeing different images as well. It has a viewing cone of about 50 degrees in front of the display, and it can support up to about 50 different images in a single hologram. So you can work that out. It's about one different image per degree that you're looking at it differently. At any one time, your eye will see not a single perspective image, but it will actually see several blurred together. And this has two main side effects, one of which is good and one of which is bad. The good side effect is that as you move your head or rotate the display, the images are kind of cross-fading from one to the other, and it kind of gives the impression of it being a more solid object because you're not seeing the image jump between the different images. But the bad side effect is that because you're seeing several different images at one time, they kind of blur together if they change too much over the different perspectives. So anything that's too far into the foreground or too far back into the background tends to turn into a kind of blurry mess. Um, and that's not great. You can counteract it um, by applying a depth of field, kind of Gaussian style blur or bokeh style blur. Um, and that gives everything uh, in the looking glass portrait, a kind of artistic look, <laughs> which may be what you're going for. But if you wanted to show like a CAD 3D model and have everything razor sharp and focus, that's not really possible with current technology. Hopefully it's something we can do in the future. So a little bit more about the actual device itself. Um, it has these nice touch sensitive buttons on the side for going to the previous or next hologram, and then one for pausing the current hologram if it's a video or setting it to play on repeat. It has an on off button here, and then finally a button for adjusting the uh, light on the front. So you can either have it off or have an extra little sort of highlight light to give your holograms a bit more emphasis. It's quite nice. I leave it on about half brightness. There's two main modes of operation. You can either plug it into your computer and then use it uh, like an external display, which is a little more convenient for actually creating the holograms and previewing them before you copy them over. And you can also run it in standalone mode. There's a Raspberry Pi hiding in here, um, so it kind of operates all of the functions um, when you have it just plugged into USB-C power. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Looking Glass website, download and install the Holoplay service, and then download and run Holoplay Studio. And that's the app you're going to use to convert your files into the right formats and copy them over to the device. Um, now, the first and easiest way to get some sort of content on there is just with an iPhone portrait mode photo. So make sure your iPhone is in portrait mode, make sure it's active at the time, you know, it's sort of blurring out the background for you, and then take a picture, and then you're gonna to want to copy it over to your PC or Mac. Just make sure you've got it in uh, automatic transfer mode um, rather than keep originals, because you want a JPEG and not a HEIC file, which is the original file format. It might be supported in the future, but for now it is not. So keep it as a JPEG for the time being. And then once you've got your JPEG on your computer, go to uh, add hologram, iPhone portrait photo, and go to import file, and then go and find it. And then if you've got that set up right, um, it should start appearing on your display. And then you do want to play with these focus and depthiness sliders a little bit. So definitely the focus, and you want to bring um, the, the point you want to focus just 
onto that parallax plane so that it looks the sharpest. And that's probably someone's eyes or their face. It might be quite a narrow depth of field as well, so you'll want to play with it to get the best effect. Um, you can also play with the depthiness slider, and that just makes it use more or less of the depth of the display. Um, so you probably don't want to set that too high, you probably want it somewhere in the middle. Um, if you have it all the way over to the left, you'll have a very sharp looking photograph, but you won't have any sense of depth. <laughs> so you will want to increase that somewhere to where it looks comfortable. Uh, and then just have a look at your image and make sure it looks good from different angles. And there you go, that's your iPhone portrait mode photo in your playlist. Uh, and then if you go and click on sync playlist, as long as it's connected by USB-C to your computer, you can then copy over the files and run it in standalone mode as well. So the second method is to use RGBD, and this basically means red, green, blue, depth. So you capture a color image and a depth image. And normally you have them side by side in a single photo or video file. Uh, and yeah, you can use this method to show a video on your looking glass portrait. So the easiest way to capture a video like this is with an iPhone that has a LiDAR sensor built in. And then you use an app called Record 3D. And then I suggest you put the phone on a tripod and keep the camera essentially static, and then have your actor nicely framed and not moving around too much in the frame in front of you, and then record your clip. And um, once it's recorded, um, you can export it as a looking glass file, um, which is actually in, in MP4 format, um, and then that's got their color and depth information side by side. And then once that is exported, you can use iTunes on your Mac or PC to copy the file over onto your computer and then import it into Holoplay Studio. So assuming you've done all of that stuff, um, you can then go to RGBD photo and video, import file, go and find wherever you saved it, and then you should have this video file here and then you can see it running on your portrait. What you may notice is that as you move your head left and right while looking at this kind of hologram, you don't see a lot of information about what's behind. And in fact, um, that is a drawback of this capture method. Using a single perspective, um, you can't really uh, show information um, with this full sense of parallax. Um, so yeah, unfortunately using a depth map basically just means that you're giving height to that single flat image um, and you can't really show anything that isn't uh, convex. So yeah, it's a great, easy and quick way of getting something that looks 3D, um, but it's perhaps not a true way of showing the different perspectives. So the third option you have in Holoplay Studio is to add a quilt photo and video. Um, and this basically means that all of the different perspective images are arranged in a big grid. Uh, and then once you've got that file, you can import it into Holoplay uh, and then export it onto the device. Now there's actually any way, you know, or any number of different ways you could create this quilt video. You just need a way of capturing something from these 40 or 50 different viewpoints and then getting them together into a single image. And one really uh, good way of doing that is with Unity. So you can make a quilt video uh, in Unity relatively easily. Well, I say easily, if you're a Unity expert, it will be easy. If you've never used Unity before, it will be hard. <laughs> but I'll show you what you have to do. Uh, so go and download uh, Looking Glass's Unity plugin from their website and then create a new Unity project. Go to Assets, Import Package, and go and import that uh, Unity plugin that you downloaded. Uh, and then you should get a whole load of example scenes. So if you look in Assets Holoplay, you can go and look under Examples. And the one I'd point you to for this, uh, the best place to start, is the recording example scene. And if you just duplicate that and then make a copy of it, you can then just change the content and then record your new content instead. So what I've done is I've uh, copied that, made a new scene called Assassin, and I downloaded a free 3D model from TurboSquid, which was like a, a cool female warrior assassin lady. So this is the capture volume, this uh, green cuboid, um, and that's basically where you want to position your content. And this purple area, that's where the content is gonna be most 
in focus. So that's the zero parallax plane. It's basically kind of the middle of the display and it's where if you move your head, you wouldn't see anything different. So it's the least blurry part of the display as well. So you actually want your content to sort of mostly align uh, on that plane and then anything that comes too far forward or back um, is gonna be subject to that bit of blur. So you want less interesting things to be away from the plane. And then you can just kind of preview it. So um, hit play uh, in the editor and then you should see your scene. Um, if you don't have a looking glass display connected, you will see like this diagonal slice down the middle. And on one section of the screen, you're seeing like the far left image and on the other, you're seeing the far right image, which it's a little confusing, but you can uh, frame up your content more nicely that way. Uh, and then once you hit start, you'll start recording your video. Now it does hit the CPU pretty hard, so you'll probably only be recording at a few frames per second. Um, but that's because it's generating, you know, 40 or 50 different images uh, for each frame um, that it's rendering out. So um, it does take a while. So let that record for as long as you want um, until you get like decent length video. And then you can save that out just by hitting end. And then if you go and look in the folder where you had your project, you should have this file called output. Um, it's a WebM movie, and you'll have this video in quilt format. And that's ready to be imported into Holoplay Studio. And then the fourth method, um, which is a little bit more tricky, I would say, is to use a proper light field photo set. So this is actually manually taking 40 or 50 different images of your subject at different angles. Now, there's a few different ways you could do this. You could set up cameras at every single degree difference angle um, and take them all at the same time. But to do that, you would need 40 or so different cameras. So that's not um, very practical. You could record a video uh, of your camera moving along on a slider and then take a snapshot um, from the video file every X degrees, um, which you know you might work out as it's a photo every half a second, for example, something like that. Um, or you could set it on a timer and have it manually take a photograph each time. And then once you've got all of those photos from different angles, um, you can put them into a folder um, and then name them so that they are incremental in name with uh, numbers at the end. And then the the best example of this I've seen is actually from Looking Glass themselves of this Swiss army knife. And uh, once you have this folder of images taken from different angles, uh, you can import the folder itself. It takes a little while to um, generate the uh, file that goes on the Looking Glass portrait. Once that's done, I think it looks great. And the advantage of this is that uh, things like reflections in various surfaces are kind of true to life because as you move your head you'll pick up more of like a specular reflection or maybe less and um, things like a giant magnifying glass will really work the way they're supposed to because you're looking through it at the correct angle and this is really the magic of the light field display and why it's different and in many ways better to um, you know previous stereoscopic attempts. So that's the final way uh, of getting content on and really it kind of shows that um, as long as you can get into uh, quilt format or into this kind of incremental photo for each perspective, you can take content almost from any source and actually convert it into a format ready to view on the display. So another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, because there is a Unity plugin, you can now essentially develop games for the Looking Glass portrait. Um, and that might seem like a bit of a gimmick at first, but when you think, well, now you've got a proper sense of perspective, you could you know, move your head to reveal clues in an environment that were otherwise hidden um, if you don't move around. So it does allow some interesting new possibilities. Also, there's some software called Voxatron Designer, um, and that will let you build uh, voxel-based 3D games. So that's also worth um, having a look if you're into development. So should you buy a looking glass portrait light field display? Well, obviously that's very much down to you. Um, if you just want to play with some new technology, then this is great. It's not too expensive. Um, and you know, there are lots of great tools to start making your own holograms for it. Or if you just want a really cool new kind of digital photo frame where you can show off your iPhone portrait pictures, it's gonna work great for that uh, as well. 
I would say that this is very like bleeding edge technology and kind of the problems with the blurriness, um, they require like a bit of uh, work to get past. You really have to curate content quite carefully to make it look good on this device. You can't just kind of throw any old image on there and expect it to look great. Um, but I do think it's amazing technology as well. And you know, when I think back to like the early 2000s when I was messing around with like the LCD shutter glasses, and you know, just like starting to get some stereoscopic games working. Um, to have this display in front of me now, um, it feels like the culmination of a pipe dream, really. Um, so it's really exciting to see this actually happening. So yeah, if you get one and play around with it, I'd love to hear about your adventures in the comments section down below. Well, I hope this video was useful. If so, leave me a like down below and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.